Hello, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to turn the Markov model that we looked at for rock, paper, scissors into an implemented Excel model as a Markov cohort simulation. So I've got Excel open and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in the, uh, the transitions that we saw in our data. So you may remember that we had um, some data on when they used rock, paper or scissors, and then what they did next. Okay, so my next step is going to be to create a total column for this, and I can hold Alt and press equals to automatically get that sum formula, and then Control D to fill that down, a bit of a more convenient way of doing things. And then I'm going to turn this into a transition probability matrix. So in a transition probability matrix, all of the columns need to sum to 1. How do I do that? Well, sorry, all of the rows need to sum to 1. What I will do is I will make sure that for each one, I take the relevant element and then I divide it by its row total. And then I'm going to hit F4 until it shows me that I'm using $F instead of F3 and that will make sure that as I fill across and down it sticks with this column that chooses the correct row. Okay, Control R to fill right, Control D to fill down. There we go, so I've now got a transition probability matrix. You can see that row sums to 1, that row sums to 1, that row sums to 1. All good, so now I'm going to create my Markov cohort simulation. So we're going to have rounds of uh, rock, paper, scissors, I think is probably the appropriate way to describe them. And let's have 20 different rounds. And we're going to start off using rock. And this is a cohort simulation. It doesn't actually matter what cohort size you use, but let's just imagine that we're looking over a thousand different 20 round games of rock, paper, scissors and the opponent always starts with rock for some particular reason. Right, so in round two, we need to look at what happened in round one to work out what's going to be happening. So, for somebody to arrive in rock, we're looking at this column here. So if they were previously in rock, that's the one that we're going to use. So I'll go equals that times this. And now I'm going to hit F4 to say I want that to be an absolute reference. I don't want it to move at all. Okay. But then people could also come from paper, obviously not in this particular round, but in later rounds, and I want the formula to work throughout. Like that. And then finally, for scissors. So this is now my formula for determining how many, how many times he will play rock in the second round. I'll do a similar thing for paper. So the only difference is now I'm looking in this second column of the transition probability matrix. So I always pick the relevant row based on what the what state they were in before, and then the relevant column for the state that they are in now. Finally, this is Fantastic. And we can just check by highlighting these that they still sum to a thousand. So we haven't lost anybody by mistake. And I can fill down with Control D. And you'll see down towards the bottom that we've reached that steady state that we talked about on the previous video. So here's our basic Markov cohort simulation. It's done. Um, there are a couple of things that we can do to tidy it up and improve it though. So, first of all, what I'm doing here in these is I've got the sum of products. So that might make me think I can use the sum product function here to make these look a bit neater. So the way that we would do that is, first of all, we need to transpose this matrix. That means flip it. So we swap the columns for rows. 
And then what we can do is we can write, I want the sum product of this previous whole row with this specific row of that matrix now been flipped and hit enter. Okay, so that didn't change the number at all, which is good. We wouldn't expect it to change the number. Fill that down. For paper, all I need to do to change in this formula is to move that down one. And then for scissors, move it down another one. Okay, so I think these look a little bit tidier. You can actually make them even tidier still. So you can have what's called uh, an array formula or a control shift enter formula here. So instead of filling one at a time, we're going to select the whole row. We're going to say equals M mult for matrix multiple. And then we're going to take the previous row and we're going to multiply that by the entire original transition probability matrix. And now because this is an array formula or a control shift enter formula, you can't just press enter, you have to hold control and shift. There we go. And then you can fill that down as we did before. Now we don't need this at all. So here is our lovely Markov cohort simulation using nice and clean formulae and we're all done.